Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and serving your guests a double smoked ham for the holidays might be easy, but not always amazing. Today, we're gonna change that. So right before Easter, your local grocery store might be packed to the brim with these pre-smoked, maybe even spiral cut ham roasts. And while this solves a couple of problems in terms of preparation, if we were to get a fresh ham, we'd have to cure that ourselves and smoke it. We definitely save some time and energy there. It presents two new problems. One is smoke in terms of how much smoke we can get. We weren't able to tailor this to our individual needs. And the second one is drying out. If you grew up uh, with holiday hams, they're often prepared in an oven. And my memory, childhood memory burned in there. And one of the reasons for a long time I didn't love ham is it's just dried out. So I'm gonna share how to solve our smoke as well as our dry problem and turn out an amazing holiday ham with barely any effort since I am gonna be using a spiral cut ready to go ham from my local grocery store for today's cook. So the solution to our two problems lies in how you set up either a big green egg, Kamado Joe, like I'm using today. And so while the Kamado Joe or big green egg or any ceramic cooker is really good at retaining lots of moisture, I've already done some tests head to head with a water pan starting last year. And this was a number one myth that is shared. If you have a Kamado style cooker, you don't need a water pan. And I was blown away when I actually tested it side by side and you can taste it, that the water pan helped improve the smoke flavor. And this makes sense. If you, look, if you look up how smoke adheres to any sort of protein, you need some humidity. What I didn't like at the time is I put my water pan directly below the food. And so as that water evaporates, it's steaming whatever you're cooking and this absolutely ruins your bark. Later on in the year, I started tweaking with my double indirect setup and found that I can get away with a water pan sitting on one of my heat deflectors, put a spare set of deflectors or a pizza stone, which is exactly what I'm doing today. And this allows me to get that same humidity benefit as we're going to be steaming that water, blocking it with our second set of deflectors so that it circulates up and through the dome and helps our smoke adhere to our protein. This is critically important for something like a pre-smoked ham, which is what we're cooking today. That's gonna to solve our first problem and also helps solve our second problem in terms of drying things out. So we're gonna go a nice gentle 270 to max 300 degrees Fahrenheit today using my double indirect setup, the water pan, as well as some additional hickory wood that I placed in the bottom of our charcoal pile uh, when I lit the grill. And I've got a couple extra small pieces left over here uh, that I might toss into the drawer about the hour mark just to make sure that we're continue able to roll some smoke for the cook. So to show you how we're gonna prep our ham as well as a few more details on setting up your grill, uh, let me take you back about 30 minutes ago uh, when I lit our fire and seasoned up our ready to go ham. And when I rejoin you present time, we'll start to work on our glaze that we're gonna wanna start adding around the 110 degree Fahrenheit internal temperature mark in about an hour to an hour and a half's time. See you then. All right, let's get our Joe ready. I've already cleaned out the ash from the last cook. And I get asked all the time why I don't overfill the basket. And it's for reasons just like this. When we wanna switch to our next cook, it's much easier not having a full basket so I can start to place some smoking wood down on the bottom, cover it up with what remaining charcoal I have, and then I get ready to add some new charcoal and start our fire. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna place a couple pieces of hickory smoking wood uh, on the bottom, but anything like this, apple, peach, cherry, fruit woods would be good. But since this is already a smoked and cured ham, I wanna get a little, um, I wanna get something a little bit stronger. So I'm going with hickory today. Take it fast forward while I bury these, add some fresh fogo. Okay, we've covered up our smoking wood of charcoal. I'm just taking care not to pile it too high. I'm not gonna install the deflectors right now, but later on they're gonna be sitting on these notches on the charcoal basket. And I wanna make sure that I don't have charcoal so high that it's gonna to be touching or interfering with that. So this looks good. I can slide my hand underneath, no problem. Pull that back out, grab our grill blazer grill gun, fire it up. Start a nice hot fire right in the center. I'll have my deflectors in the low position, but for now I want to have them heat soaking a little bit, which is why I'm stalling the X accessory ring up higher than our fire. And why I'm also going to drop a deflector in like a pizza shape so that plenty of heat can come up and heat soak our dome. 
If we were to uh, warm up with our deflectors, we could do that. Uh, but often what will happen is we'll be burning a lot more fuel, blocking that heat from getting up and touching uh, or making contact with our temperature probe. Uh, and then all of a sudden we'll overshoot our temperature. Uh, so this is just much easier to make sure that these get nice and heat soaked, our dome gets heat soaked, and we don't have to deal with overshooting and then clamping down and then trying to regain our fire. So I'll rejoin you in a couple of minutes once uh, this is up to temperature. We don't really need gloves today as this already is a cured and smoked cooked to food safe ham. Uh, but since I'm going to be smearing it with mustard and handling everything, it'll just make it easier uh, for me to move on to getting it to our grill without having uh, to go inside and clean up. So for our rub, normally I'm a big proponent of making your own rub and doing an overnight dry brine. If you do that on this ham that's already cooked and smoked and cured, which is uh, going to add some uh, salinity into it already, it's going to be way too salty. What we do want is to build a bit of a pseudo bark and to help do that we want a rub with sugar. I normally don't add any sugar into my rubs and I've still got these from last year, my how to make your own rubs video, which I'm a big proponent of, but they're going to go bad if I don't use them. So I've got some Heath Riles uh, garlic jalapeno rub as well as Matt's uh, Texas sugar rub. Both of these have a little bit of sugar, as well as complementary spices like garlic, onion, a little bit of uh, jalapeno, obviously, and things like dehydrated syrups. That's going to definitely give us our bark. So I'm just going to use a little bit of yellow mustard as a binder. I'll take it fast forward while I put a quick little smear coat on. I'm going to add a meter probe just so that lets me know when to get ready to start adding our glaze. Our glaze is going to have even more sugar. And if we were to add that too early, it would completely burn. So we want a little bit of char but not uh, completely burnt. So take it fast forward while I smear the mustard on. Start with our jalapeno rub, followed by a little layer of our Texas sugar. Looks good. Take our probe, try and avoid hitting the bone shank. We can feel that's running right down, but at the same time, I don't want to be in an open area that's just going to get a false reading. So right here looks good, right past that line. And it'll just give me a ballpark again, looking for about 110 degrees Fahrenheit when I want to start glazing. This looks good. Let's go finish our double indirect setup and then we'll get this on. All right, we are up to temperature. So let's get to work moving our deflectors down to the low position. Place our first deflector down the low position. Second deflector. You can always use our ash tool just to slide these a little bit so we've got nice even spacing all the way around. That looks good. Drop in our smokeware drip pan, which I am using as a water pan today. So I've added some hot water just to reduce the time that takes to warm up. I don't want to overfill it as it'll just boil and come out the sides, but add a little bit more. Okay, next we can add our X accessory ring back in on the second level. There's plenty of space here. Either a pizza stone like the Kamado Joe stone here or an extra set of deflectors. Totally worth having if you don't have either a pizza stone or a spare deflector, especially for this double indirect setup. This is going to work really well. I'll rejoin you over there to explain the why in a second. My second smokeware drip pan with some foil in it just to make it easier to clean up. Cooking grid, cooking grids, and our ham. Let's close that up. Close our bottom vent down to about one finger switch. So we recovered to about 250 degrees. So to hold 270, I want to bring our control tower top to about an eighth of an inch to maximum quarter inch past the first line here on our control tower top. Okay, we're about an hour in. So I've just grabbed from the bottom of the bag a whole bunch of smaller little hickory pieces. These aren't quite chips, but they're definitely not chunks or pellets. So uh, out of my own curiosity, I want to see how these burn now that our smoking wood should be about consumed from when we let our grill. Let's toss these in. And when we're all said and done, we'll do a little peek and see how we did on getting any of these to burn up and add some supplemental smoke onto our double smoked ham. Back to one finger. Keep on cooking. Okay, our ham is reaching or nearly reaching about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So now is the time we want to make up our glaze. I'll put the exact amount down below. I'm going to start off with some maple syrup, Canada's candy, three quarter cup brown sugar. This is cinnamon. I want an equal amount of allspice. So I'm just going to add, uh, I have allspice in cloves. So I'm going to grind some of that up really quickly by eye in my pepper cannon. Set that to a fine grade, just like our cinnamon. I think I was on about 24, so I'll go all the way over, grind that up. 
So by I, that looks about equal for those two. Drop that in, return what we didn't use for next time. We want three heaping tablespoons of Dijon. I say heaping just because it's not gonna be tightly packed with the air in between. Go for a medium to low heat. Wait till the thickens up in about 15 minutes. Rejoin you in a couple of minutes when this is thickened up and is ready to start glazing our ham. All right, I think this looks good. Let's go check on our smoking wood situation as we are about to bump the temperature up to about 425 degrees for our glaze. Meet you over there. All right, let's take a look. I like what I see. There is no evidence of any wood chips or little baby chunks left. So I'm going to add a few more. Uh, one of the challenges with a roast that's already been smoked is getting smoke to stick. So the best time to do that is when there's moisture, which is again why we went with the water pan. But now that we're adding our glaze, that um, liquid content will also help some smoke it here. So I want just a few more small pieces in there for our finishing touches. Slide that back in, back to one finger. Open our control tower top. That should be about 450 degrees. If Once it gets a little closer to 425, we'll come back down to about the halfway point. Let's warm that up. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, that's looking good. So we're starting to get a little bit of that bark from our rub. Now we want to cover this with our glaze. We'll do this about every 10, 15 minutes or so until we finish at our internal temperature our final finishing temperature of about 140 to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Take it fast forward while I cover this up. Looks good. Let's keep cooking. Well, it's about 20 minutes later, and not only has there been an amazing turnaround in the weather outside, our double smoked spiral glazed ham is done according to the meter. So let's come nice and close. Let's take a look. First thing we're going to check is the ash door just to see how it did at this higher temperature to see how much that smoking wood we got through. Then we're going to get our ham off onto a board, cover it with foil, let it rest for 20 minutes. and We'll be ready to slice into it for our taste test. See how we did. Once again, even in that shorter amount of time with the temperature turned up, I think we've gotten through all of our wood chunks today. So hopefully it tastes as good as that looks promising. Let's get our ham off. Oh, that certainly looks good. So I've just got a bit of a spatula scraper here. I'm going to try and gently lift this off and get it on our board. All right, for slicing, we've got a couple options. I know everyone has a different preference. Some people sort of like to go down and get some side pieces. Other people like to flip our roast up onto the side and separate the three muscle groups. I like to try and keep the spirals together. So I'm just going to trace along the bone. Perfect. All right, let's see how it is. Got a piece of some of our glaze in the edge piece. Wow. The label might have said smoked before. It's smoked now in all of the best ways. I'm going to get a bit more of a sample here. This is amazing. I'm going to get it inside so it doesn't cool off. Rejoin you with my thoughts. That's without a doubt the best double smoked ham I've ever made. If I can say I made it because we sort of bought it already halfway done. But those finishing touches are absolutely fantastic. So let me break down everything that's going on on the taste buds. So first, as I mentioned, the smoke, that hickory smoke, not only is it there, it's incredibly clean. It's really easy to go on the wrong side of smoke and get dirty smoke inside your Kamado if you choke out all of that air. We fixed this uh, going the complete opposite approach with our double indirect where we're burning a cleaner, hotter fire. And boy, oh boy, can you tell the difference when we burn that much wood. Not only we get through you know, the chunks that we placed in the beginning, but also two loads in our ash basket to completely consume uh, that additional hickory that we added is all there in the best ways possible when it comes to smoke. That seasoning on the bark on the outside adds a little bit extra to that kick. So that garlic jalapeno is the first thing that I noticed followed by, uh, by some of those more savory notes in our meat church uh, rub where you get a little bit of that sweet, a little bit of that heat coming together. And the mustard glaze just brings it all together with the flavor of ham. <laughs> you can't go wrong. This is, I'm not joking. I, I would say I made it, but it's already pre-cooked in some sense. But this is the best one I've ever done or ever had at anybody's house. This is 
fantastic. So if you've not tried a double smoked ham before, regardless if you're cooking on Kamado Joe Big Green Egg or whatever it is you might be following along on the offset would be absolutely amazing. You're going to want to give this a try uh, if you haven't uh, at your next big family gathering where people are looking for ham on the menu. That's it for today though. I'm James from Smoking Dead Barbecue signing off and remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.